Hey, welcome back to the channel. In our last video, which I will link up here, uh, I showed you this battery behind me in failure mode. So in today's video, we're going to talk about some of the different options that we had for replacing this battery and ultimately what we went with. Let's begin by showing you just how far lithium battery tech has come since we purchased this battery in late 2016. This was an $1,800 200 amp hour battery and was just a couple of lithium battery options available at the time. It features these balance boards that were externally mounted across the four cells of the battery. We've had to replace these balance boards several times due to external corrosion on the boards, which eventually led to component failure. I was carrying spare parts due to the failure of these boards. Today, this balance circuitry is internal to the battery. In addition to the balance boards, I'm pointing to the battery management system, or BMS, which was a separate computer compared to today's internal ones. I'm pointing out the VGA cable that ran the data screen, wiring that connected the balance boards, and these huge external contactors that were responsible for disconnecting loads and charging sources if the BMS detected a problem. And today, we don't need any of this. We're replacing the screen with something else. The contactors, don't need those anymore. We're putting in a different shunt. VMS, now internal. All this balance board stuff, all internal. So our new battery will simplify our electrical system by quite a bit. Let's remove some components so we can take a look at the space we have available for our new power system. In short, packaging is going to be a big determining factor on what type of system we replace this one with. In the rear of this van, we have a nice compact electrical system. If you haven't seen it before, a couple panels to remove. And you can see this is the battery and sitting on top is our inverter. And I'm going to start by removing this inverter so you can get a better idea what is inside of this box. I will go ahead and speed through the footage of disassembling this stuff. I feel like some of you are interested in seeing how uh, all these components are assembled. This good looking unit acts as both our battery tie down as well as a mount for our inverter. This is the space we have to work with, and it's really small. Back in late 2023, I had this EcoFlow power kit on demo for a few months and made this video comparing the pros and cons to our DIY electrical system. I even designed a custom aluminum electrical cabinet around the EcoFlow system as shown here. If you're interested in a plug and play system like this, follow the link in the description as I have a coupon code to save you 10% off the purchase, which can save you thousands of dollars. Unfortunately, this is not an option for us without reworking our cabinetry. So this is the route I took instead. All right, I was able to substantially simplify this electrical box. So this negative bus bar was already here, but I was able to get rid of those contactors. I was able to get rid of the BMS, the battery management system, uh, really be able to clean this up down here. So. Most of the components are all the same as they were. Um, basically what I did was remounted some of these components like the 200 amp uh, class T fuse is mounted here. This is the uh, Victron smart shunt for the battery monitor. I moved the solar circuit breaker over here. I mounted a new positive distribution block down here. And then I cut this board down oh, several inches 
uh, because the footprint of the new battery is a few inches wider than the old one. It's 280 amp hours versus 200. So this is much cleaner now. So I'll give you a quick overview of basically what's going on here. So we have the solar coming in from the roof and that goes through a solar circuit breaker. So this allows me to not only uh, protect the wire in case of a short, but it also allows me to turn off the solar. Then it goes through the solar charge controller and then it goes through uh, another breaker down here and then it goes into our positive distribution block. And we can also charge off of our alternator. So there's a 1000 watt inverter up under the passenger seat and that provides uh, 120 volt power uh, to this plug here. So the inverter charger uh, basically receives 120 volts from the, the other inverter and it thinks it's connected to shore power so that will charge our batteries. And then of course we can plug into the wall too to charge. So those are all the charging sources and then on the the load side we have a few of these uh, Blue Sea fuse blocks that are all tied together in various places of the van. So those are our loads which connect to the positive and negative bus. But as for the flow of energy from the battery, this is the positive battery terminal. Power flows through the class T fuse up into a battery switch. So it's always hot to right here. When the battery switch is off, everything downstream of the switch is uh, disconnected. So when you close that switch, it sends power to the positive bus, which uh, gives all the DC circuits power. And then there's another line that comes out of the DC bus and into an inverter switch. And this goes to the positive inverter so that we can, uh, we can shut the inverter off and basically isolate it. And then on the negative side, uh, this is the negative terminal coming off the battery. It goes down into the Victron Smart Shunt and then it goes to the negative bus. So that's basically everything here. There's also a DC breaker uh, for the master for all of the DC fuse blocks. So now it's time to get the battery installed. The battery you're watching me drop in is a 12 volt, 280 amp hour, eco-worthy brand LifePo battery. I'll put a link in the description so you know what version I bought, as there are several. I bought the Bluetooth Smart version with the low temperature protection. Now why did I choose this battery over the myriad of other options? Now the first important thing to point out is that this video is not sponsored by this company. I paid for this battery with my own money. Uh, there were a number of companies that reached out to me that wanted me to help promote their products. Uh, I'm not doing that. In fact, um, to date, they're, everything in this van um, I have paid for with my own money. So nothing has been paid for by another company. So there's a number of criteria that led me to this battery. And to start with, I had 200 amp hours of battery capacity before. That was fine. Uh, there were times when I was in the Pacific Northwest where you know, parked under trees, not a lot of sunlight, where um, I could have used a little bit more capacity. And with the way that the direction that lithium iron phosphate batteries have come, um, the prices have come down quite substantially, actually. Um, you can get more capacity now in a similar size. So I kind of knew I wanted something in the like 270 to 300 amp hour range. And on top of that, um, what I didn't want was two or three independent, like 100 amp hour batteries that I have to tie together. It just adds wiring, expense, complexity. Um, you know, in a moving van, cables come loose and you have to check that stuff often. I mean, you could pretty easily have a fire if you've got a battery cable loose and you're pulling 100 amps through your inverter. You gotta keep an eye on that kind of stuff. And next was construction. Um, I wanted something that was built well, so I started poking around on YouTube and I had found a number of uh, use cases. These videos were all at the time 18 to 20 months old, which by now they're about two years old. 
and these are off-grid people or van or marine people that have been using these batteries and have good things to say. And then in addition, um, shout out to Will Prowse that does uh, really great uh, battery overviews and he does teardowns and, and he really seemed to like this battery. Um, he shows inside how it's constructed and he seemed to be impressed by uh, how it was built uh, at the price point. So uh, the fact that there are a lot of happy users out there um, and the fact that, you know, the teardowns and, and all of that reviews uh, seem very favorable, it definitely seemed uh, worth looking into. Of course, we can't have this discussion without talking about price, too. Um, these batteries are very affordably priced. In fact, you can buy three, maybe even four of these batteries for the same price as one of the big name brand brand batteries, if you will. So given the price point and given the good reputation, uh, the risk reward ratio seemed worth it. So, uh, so we're gonna give it a shot. Now there are a number of other batteries that are uh, very similar and in a very similar price point. And the reason that I chose this battery over the others were primarily like the teardown videos had better construction that had uh, the way that the cells are encased like in a steel frame inside the battery placement of the BMS for cooling, like those, those were favorable for this battery over some of the others. And then the app is really good. So the version of the battery I bought, which again, I will link that so you, you know which one, there are Bluetooth and non-Bluetooth versions. This version has Bluetooth, so um, you basically wouldn't have to run a battery monitor because as I'll throw up some shots here, some screenshots, um, it gives you, you know, the battery voltage and the, um, remaining battery capacity, remaining time, uh, the amp hours consumed. Um, and then in addition, and this is I think the most important, is it does give you individual cell voltages. So it gives you the, the voltages of the four cells in the battery. And if you watched my last video on the failure of my last lithium battery, you'll know why uh, I feel like having that data is important. So those are some of the factors that led me to choose this battery over some of the other options. Uh, I installed this battery back in February, um, just got back from a few days uh, in the van. Uh, everything went great. In fact, our, our friends are using the same battery in their van as well. So what I'm going to do is put an article on ourcaravan.com uh, that goes through some of the more like finer details on the battery, stuff that uh, really isn't that great to put in a video. <laughs> end up losing your audience. So take a look there. Um, I'm also, because this battery simplified our electrical system a lot. I have, I have redone the electrical diagram. So if you're curious how this van uh, is wired, there are some, some unique aspects, I think, that make wiring uh, simpler, easier, uses less wire. So, so take a look at that, and uh, that might help you with your wiring planning. We also created this clickable wiring diagram where you can click on the individual components and see exactly what we purchased. And if you do purchase through those links, it's a great way to help support this channel at no cost to you, and it's really appreciated. All right, I hope you found this video helpful, and uh, thanks for watching.